Kentucky. Round one live from Orlando next. Basketball championship. Sports presents the road to the final four. Tonight it's first round action in the southeast region. As the number seven seed Western Kentucky takes on the tenth seeded Memphis State Tigers. The winner of this game meets the winner of the game between Seton Hall and Tennessee State to be played later tonight here in Orlando. Tulane and Florida State have already advanced to the second round on Saturday. The lineups for this one for Memphis State. The forwards are Anthony Hardaway and Kelvin Allen with Anthony Douglas in the middle. Sidney Coles and Billy Smith, the backcourt for Western Kentucky. Darnell Mee and Brian Brown, the forwards. Darius Hall, the center. Mark Bell and Darren Horn are the guards. The officials, Duke Edsel, Bob Donato, and Bob Pugh. Sean McDonough, along with Derek Dickey, happy to have you with us for what we expect will be a track meet. I think we will need to fasten our seatbelts on, Sean. This game is going to go up and down. Western Kentucky averages about 18 threes. Florida State averages about 16 threes. And the main man for Memphis State is Anthony Hardaway. His coach, Larry Finch, says he is, without question, the best player in the country. Arguably, I think Penny Hardaway is the best player in the country. I said Florida State. This is Memphis State Tigers getting ready to play, and I think you'll know why once you see this special young man. He is, I think, the best player in the country. Larry Finch is his head coach in his seventh year as head man at his alma mater. Western Kentucky in the white uniforms, Memphis State in the blue. Hardaway will jump center with Darius Hall. Then we're underway. Hall didn't even contest it. Hardaway control. And Hardaway wastes little time in trying to prove Derek Dickey right. Well, Anthony Hardaway has the ability to score just about anywhere on the court, but he is so unselfish. Larry Finch told us yesterday he has to shoot the ball in order for the team to be successful, but you saw him jump center. Very talented player. Mark Bell in the backcourt at just 5'8". And this is Darnell Mee, the leading scorer for Western Kentucky, number three. Too high off the glass and taken off the backboard by Kelvin Allen. Anthony Hardaway actually got a piece of that shot from the backside. And a piece at the other end by Darius Hall as Douglas tried the shot. Credit the bucket to Kelvin Allen. And the Tigers are out to a 4 0 lead. Western Kentucky wants to run the ball up the court and try to get baskets in transition instead of playing half court. Much better team when they're able to push the ball up the court off the rebound as opposed to taking it out of the basket. Western Kentucky enters this one at 24 and 5 overall. The Hilltoppers have won their last six and 12 of 13. Shot well off the mark from Bell. That one might have been tipped as well. Douglas in transition. Count the bucket and he was fouled. Darius Hall called for the game's first foul. 6-0 Memphis State, and Douglas will have a chance to make it 7. Memphis State has the ability to run off points in groups. They'll run off 2, 4, 6, 8 points, but take a look at Anthony Douglas coming in your living room. They list him at 6'7". He's about 6'6", six six, 275 pounds. Don't know if I'd want to take that contact. Hardaway was excited about the bucket. Douglas, just a 61% free throw shooter. Plenty of height, not enough distance. Memphis State's going to apply their three-quarter court zone press, trying to force a turnover. Aaron Horn, too strong. Western Kentucky looks a little bit tight out of the gate. All lost it on the floor to Hardaway. Nice defensive play by me. Coach Ralph Willard thinks he's one of the best defensive players in the country. He's been in the top ten in the country in steals all season long. Darnell Mee has got great hands, great court awareness, always looking over his shoulder for the basketball. There's Ralph Willard. 
in his third year as head coach at Western Kentucky. He's just the ninth head coach in the 73 year history of that program. Horn and finally Western Kentucky gets one to drop. It's going to be important for Western Kentucky if they break the Memphis State pressure to attack and try to score. Pass a bit too hot for Smith to handle as Allen tried to feed him. to Memphis State. We've played just more than two minutes here in Orlando. I think the benches are going to be very important in this game because if both teams continue to press and trap, you're going to have to use several players because you need fresh legs out there on the court in order to stay in a highly competitive game like this. Darnell Me off the mark from three-point range. Offensive rebound for Hall. And it won't drop for him. Finally, it's controlled by Douglas. Hardaway, an NBA three. Bell pushes. Down the lane, Brian Brown gets it to drop in. Excellent job by Mark Bell. On the break, always looking with his head up. Billy Smith scores. Oh, well, he said it would be up and down, and they're starting to get into a rhythm. Indeed, they are. They call him the elevator man. Billy Smith at six foot four jumps over most of the defenders in his way. Eight four, Memphis State. We passed the three minute mark. Hesitation move by Bell, and he was fouled. Memphis State's such an aggressive team on both ends of the court. You have an opportunity, if you're being overplayed, to go to the basket. You're going to get some back doors. You may even be able to get past that first line of defense, just as Mark Bell did on that exchange, and get some easy layups or get fouled in the, in the process. Darius Hall heads out as Cephas Bunton has checked in, number 34, for Western Kentucky. The foul on Douglas was... His first, and the first free throw is made by Mark Bell. He's just a 62.5 percent free throw shooter. And that's been a surprising weakness for Western Kentucky this year. They're 64 percent as a team after having led their conference, the Sun Belt, with free throw percentage the last two years. Hardaway shot is short, and it's corralled along the end line by Darnell Mee. good penetrator had it knocked away by Sidney Coles Western Kentucky will keep it I like what Darren Horn does he's always looking to penetrate look to get, get inside the free throw line area so he can create something for his teammates the inbound to Bell the senior from Louisville tough pass Brown couldn't handle it Allen did Coles on the run and he's fouled Both these teams like to push the ball up the court. Get those easy baskets. Get numbers if you can. Attack and try to score. One foul on Darren Horn. Two fouls on Western Kentucky. They ruled that the foul was in the act of shooting. So Sidney Coles is at the line. The freshman from Lewisburg, West Virginia. He's the only player on the Memphis State roster from outside the state of Tennessee. That say a lot for the uh, hotbed of talent that's down there in Memphis. It's about all from Memphis. Larry Finch said, I used to be getting on the plane to the airport in Memphis, heading out of town to recruit, and I'd see <laughs> all the top coaches in the country landing, coming into coming town. He in. said, why am I going out? They're coming in. <laughs> and there's a lot of talent right here. He calls that recruiting inside out. Smith, after the turnover. Smith. Assist to Anthony Haraway. Set up by Brian Brown's failure to handle the pass at the other end. Four points for Smith. The lead back up to five for Memphis State. They led by six early on at six zip. Me spinning, rejected by Kelvin Allen. Horn, nice look. Uh, Tippy was missed. Brian Brown having his troubles. Way ahead of the field is Smith. why they call him the elevator man. However, he does cheat down the 
half court. You've seen him do it the last two times. He can get burned if you attack the basket. Largest lead now for Memphis State. Bell in among the trees. Brown still cold. Button couldn't get a handle of the rebound. Hardaway. Out of control. Oh, is he fortunate that that was called a block? He was juggling the ball down the lane. Crashed into Brian Brown, and Brown was called for the block. But Anthony was out of control for most of that drive. Take a look at Anthony Hardaway. You're absolutely right. He does get bailed out as he loses the handle on his basketball, but it's always dribbling with his head up. Nice pass over the shoulder by Penny Hardaway. All five Memphis State starters have scored in the Tigers' lead, 13 to 6, just past the five-minute mark here in Orlando. First round action of the Southeast region. Hardaway, well defended that time by Darren Horn. Me. Very good passing team are these Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, always looking to make the extra pass. Just inside the line. And the rebound sailed over the head of Darius Hall, who is checked back in. Willie Smith called the offensive foul as he tried to push Bell away. It's a good call. Willie Smith has a habit of using his left arm to try to gain an advantage. And that's two fouls on Billy Smith. Chris Robinson is into the game for Western Kentucky. The freshman replaces Darren Horn. WKU with the ball. They're two of 13 from the floor. They score only six points in nearly six minutes. Robinson had it deflected by Coles, but he got it back. These teams have such good athletes, good quick hands, quick feet, quick to the ball off the glass. The baseline shot was short by Hall. He has another chance. That's blocked, but he was fouled by Kelvin Allen. First foul on Allen, the senior from Bolivar, Tennessee. Kelvin Allen's an outstanding shot blocker. He broke his foot early in the year in June in the pickup game. He required surgery, but has made the transition back into the lineup and has been a very positive contributor for Larry Finch's ball club. Darius Hall at the line. He has three rebounds to this point, all of them at the offensive end. He's a sophomore from Detroit, and... He struggles from the line, 49% from the year. For the year, 53 of 108 coming in. It's going to be difficult for Western Kentucky to stay in this game unless they make free throws. Still 13 to 6, Memphis State. Number 20 is Rodney Newsom who has checked in for Memphis State. Douglas has shot off the mark. Newsom got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. Here's Rodney, the freshman from Memphis. He was voted to the Great Midwest All-Newcomer team this season. Western Kentucky has missed its last seven shots from the field. Me fouled by Hardaway. First foul on Hardaway. You referred to him as Penny a few times. Where does that nickname come from? Well, that comes from his grandmother. And, and the, as the story goes, Anthony Penny Hardaway was given that name, nickname by his grandmother, who said he was pretty as a penny mm -hmm. growing up. And he wears the name well. As you see, he, he ranks in the top three in five offensive categories in the Great Midwest Conference. Just a tremendously talented, unselfish player. And he is the only player in the country who ranks in the top five in his conference in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and block shots, the major categories. And as you saw, not only is he in the top five in all those, he's in the top three in the great Midwest. A couple of free throws by me to make it a five-point game. Whoa, close call in the corner. The 
Hilltoppers thought they had knocked it out of bounds off Leon Mitchell, number 12, who's checked into the ballgame. Only one second went off the shot clock. The time stood still. The inbound to Mitchell, who walked on last year. He managed to get it back out of bounds off the body of Darius Hall. Leon, a sophomore, he earned a scholarship midway through last season after walking on as a freshman. We've got a couple more seconds off the shot clock here. Tipping down to 13 minutes left in the first half. Memphis State leads Western Kentucky 13-8. Hardaway is in the lane for a while. Newsom from the foul line. Short got his own rebound and was fouled as he passed off. Cephas Bunton called for the foul. It's been a few minutes since Western Kentucky has scored a basket, but both these teams go to the rebound and go to the glass very, very hard in terms of following their own shots. And, and Rodney Newsom, for example, from Memphis State, hits, as soon as he hits the floor, he's right after the basketball. Michael Fralix, a freshman, checks in for Bell. The foul was actually credited to Bell. He and Bunton were both in the neighborhood. They gave it to Bell his first. And Newsom is at the line, a 69% free throw shooter. Ralph Willard, 46 years old, a native of Brooklyn, New York. He might be a bit disconsolate tonight. He's a graduate of Holy Cross, and his alma mater went down to the first round today to Arkansas. Newsom called for the foul after his miss, his first foul. Memphis State now one of five from the line. Newsom might have been a little frustrated after missing that foul. Well, earlier today in Orlando, we saw Tulane overcome woeful free throw shooting to beat Kansas State by two. As we talked about earlier, both teams are substituting quite freely. Nice pass and the score by Hall as he took the feed from Cephas Bunton. Hardaway and Allen with him. Allen looked like he was eyeing the lock pass. Hardaway shot is short with the left hand, no doubt. Seeing a right-handed shooter. And Hardaway got a piece of it. Has it back from Mitchell. Block! Whoa! Bunton swatted it away. Great athletic ability by these teams. Me to tie it. Hall oh, got a hand on the rebound but couldn't control it. Bodies crashing in the backcourt. Douglas and Hall both went down hard as the play went into the forecourt. Western Kentucky was 24 and 5 this year. The five games they lost were by a total of 24 points, which means that they've been in every game that they've lost. Anthony Hardaway, one of six from the field, but his team leads by three. Western Kentucky and Memphis State both have great athletes who go after the basketball extremely hard on the glass. Cephas Button is going to go down and swipe the ball away as Anthony Hardaway tries to score, but just another example of how athletic Western Kentucky Hilltoppers are. Good inbounding play. They got it in the Allen of the low post, but he had it blocked. And Western Kentucky has the ball down by three. Horn to tie way off. Yes, Douglas would be wise to give it to the guard, and he did to Leon Mitchell. Whoa. A little too much on the pass from Rodney Newsom. Take a look at Darius Hall, who's also an outstanding basketball player. Anthony Hardaway tries to get the pass underneath, but over the top without committing a foul. Nice job. Sidney Coles back in. And Leon Mitchell takes a seat. Michael Fralix, the backup point guard. He appeared in all 29 games this season for Western Kentucky. As a freshman, his three is off the mark. Hardaway, a rebound. Memphis State has missed its last six shots, but 
Western Kentucky has been pulled virtually throughout. They haven't been able to capitalize. Seven straight misses as Douglas was short with a turnaround. Western Kentucky is doing a good job on the boards. They're limiting the shot opportunities by Memphis State, giving him only one shot and out. Trey looks looking for help. Finally got it off to Bunton. Robinson with it. Still a three-point lead for Memphis State with ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Button lost the handle. Robinson got it back, and then he was fouled as he took it to the bucket. It's on Anthony Douglas, his second. And that is the seventh against the Tigers, so already it's the bonus situation. And Western Kentucky will be shooting one and one with 10.26 left in the half. Ice cold are these two teams, particularly WKU at 17% from the floor. Hardaway's off to a slow start. Robinson missed the front end of the one and one. Finally, it was corralled by Kelvin Allen. Hilltoppers are still struggling at the free throw line, as are the Memphis State Tigers right now. Both teams struggling from everywhere. Yes, moment. they are. But the state's been stuck on 13 for some time. This is Hardaway, guarded by Horn. Allen with it. 15 on the shot clock. Smith, guarded by Freilitz. Hardaway with Robinson on him. Douglas shoots with four on the clock, in and out, rebounded by Chris Robinson, the freshman from Macon, Georgia. Another one and out. Nice job by the Hilltoppers once again, staying with that basketball. They get on the floor, they get on the boards. Rhode Island on the Atlantic 10 leads Purdue. St. John's with a triple-double from David Kane. Beat Texas Tech earlier. Florida State won here in Orlando. Yeah, 18 points from Sam Cashel, and Kansas pulled away from Ball State late in Chicago. Finally, Western Kentucky gets off 10 and up to 12. Western Kentucky is very, very similar if, you, if you've ever seen the Kentucky Wildcats play in terms of running a lot of screens, looking for that open shot. Darren Horn, who finally broke the long scoreless drought for Western Kentucky. Coles, they got a hand on it and knocked it off his leg. So the Hilltoppers will get it back after the fifth Memphis State turnover. Mark Bell and Darnell Mee are back in for Western Kentucky. And Gerald Horn has checked in for Memphis State for the first time. Ralph Willard told us yesterday that what he needs to do is contain the pressure that Memphis State is going to apply with him. Also try to minimize the shot attempts by Billy Smith and Anthony Hardaway, and they've done a great job at that. The pace is really slowed as the two teams have cooled off. Hardaway fouled after a lengthy drive. Sounds like some of the Western Kentucky fans felt like there was a travel on that play. Darnell Mee whistled for the foul, his first. He's a senior from Cleveland, Tennessee. He was the MVP of the Sun Belt Tournament, which the Hilltoppers won to win the automatic bid into the NCAA Tournament. They beat the New Orleans Privateers in the Sun Belt Championship game in Biloxi. Hardaway, a 77% free throw shooter. Missed the first of two. The team foul was the fifth against Coach Willard's Hilltoppers. Second straight year for Anthony Hardaway as a great Midwest Conference Player of the Year. And if he comes back next year for his senior year, he'll win it again. I don't think there's any question. The question is, will he come back? And Coach Finch told us yesterday he thinks Anthony should. He thinks he could benefit from another year of maturity. Mean, missed from three-point range. Bell, Bunton, Hall pushed in the back on the floor. Western Kentucky is extremely scrappy and aggressive, 
when it comes to going after loose balls. And Darnell Mee and Mark Bell do a tremendous job at just playing low to the ground and staying after every loose ball. And a problem for Coach Finch as Billy Smith has picked up his third foul. Rodney Newsom is back in. We're at Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida for first round action in the Southeast region. This is the first time the NCAA tournament has ever been played in the state of Florida. There is Hall, the miss. He's 0-3 from the line. Two-point lead for the Tigers of Memphis State with under eight minutes to play in the first half. Sean McDonough and Derek Tickey. They expected a high-scoring game with the two teams running up and down the floor, but they've both been ice cold. Hardaway had it swatted by Darius Hall. Bell. Ties it at 14. Western Kentucky has doing a, been doing a great job at getting the ball in their possession, but this is the first basket they've scored in the last couple of times down the court. And a foul called against Darius Hall. Two fouls on Hall. Every shot tonight is going to be contested. This is a look at Anthony Hardaway going to the basket on the baseline. Actually gets hit in the nose, but a great job once again. Darius Hall just clogging up the middle, not letting anyone from Memphis State come in there. Ball goes to the bench with two fouls. It's the sixth on the team. Kelvin Allen at the line. A 73% free throw shooter. One point this year. He made 19 free throws in a row. He has seven rebounds already tonight. Because there have been a lot of misses. Yes. But not that time. He made a pair. Four points for Allen. Memphis State leads by two and we'll be back in just a moment. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Memphis State leads by two with 7.17 left in the first half. The Tigers lead despite having gone eight minutes and 15 seconds without a field goal. They're all for the last nine from the field. Western Kentucky three for the last 15. And Bell makes it four out of 16 with the jumper from the corner. Good for three points and a one point hill topper lead. It's a nice play by Ralph Willard coming out of the timeout. Get the ball in the hands of Mark Bell to bring it up the court. Let him give it up. And he becomes a decoy who actually is involved with the play on the very end. This is the first lead for Western Kentucky. Newsom the miss. Memphis State has missed 10 in a row and they lose possession. It will go out to WKU. Memphis State seems to be shooting the ball a little quickly right now. Instead of passing it around, trying to get it inside and maybe pitch it back out, they're taking a lot of shots on the perimeter, but give credit to Western Kentucky. They're playing very good defense, limiting the Tigers only one shot. Bell, the youngest of 17 children. Lost the handle as he hit the floor, but then hustled in for the held ball, so Western Kentucky will get it back. Western Kentucky. Bell will inbound. He mentioned he's the youngest of 17 kids. He'll be the first member of his family to earn a college degree. Me. The shot was short. Looks like it should have been a goal 10. I don't know if it had a chance to go in. It looked like it was going to come down short of the rim. But Jarrell Horn certainly got his hands on it. Close to the rim. Now hit the deck. Still managed to score. And the Western Kentucky lead is three with six minutes left in the first half. That's a very tough score by Mark Bell being able to go over two defenders. Offensive foul as he swung the elbow. 
at Darren Horn. Saw Sidney Cole do that early in the year against Cincinnati and get called with a foul. That could even be an intentional foul, and I saw it called an intentional foul. Watch the elbow. There's one slap. There's the retaliation. You don't do that in front of the official. That's what Darren Horn said. Hey, how about the whistle? And he got it. Sidney Coles called for the foul. He's the brother of Bimbo Coles, the former Virginia Tech star now playing for the Miami Heat of the NBA. But the state's gone to his own. Twenty on the shot clock. Horn, good bounce past the baseline. It was deflected by Newsom. Good hustle by Coles to save it. Shot clock shot down to seven. Not. Yes. They just now see that. Me. A very long three. Great. Five points for Darnell Me. The lead is up to six. Great patience shown by the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Hardaway lost the handle. Horn. A bit fancy, but Mutton was able to track it down. Allen got a hand on his pass, but Mutton got it back. Bell for three. It was deflected in the corner by Allen. They started six for ten. They're 0 for ten since. And they're down six are the Tigers with four and a half minutes to be played in the first half. Memphis State needs to try to get the ball inside the free throw area. percentage shots. Anthony Hardaway with five points and they break the 0 for 10 drought. One three one zone being played by Memphis State. Horn down to 16 on the shot clock. An open three missed by Bell. Rebounded by Bunton. Got away with the travel. Warren tried to bunch it into the paint. And it's deflected out of bounds by Memphis State. Western Kentucky by four back after this. A lot of people marvel at the talents that Anthony Penny Hardaway displays. This is one way that he can get his team back in the game by getting higher percentage shots and taking it to the basket is just a small part of his arsenal. That basket ended a string of 11 minutes and 10 seconds without a field goal for Memphis State. Anthony Hardaway just two of eight from the field with five points. He has three fields. Western Kentucky to inbound with a four-point lead. It comes right under the bucket. And a jump ball on the alternating possession. It goes back to Memphis State as Button got stuck under the bucket. Nowhere to go. Surrounded by defenders. Three and a half minutes left in the first half here. Western Kentucky by four. Just underway out west. In Salt Lake City, Santa Clara with a two-point lead over Arizona. At the top of the backboard with that shot, Hardaway. Well, he can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's about everything there. Douglas called in the low post. Brian Brown called for his second foul. He's a senior from Atlanta who missed some time early in the year for Coach Willard with a knee injury. In fact, due to all the injuries that Western Kentucky had to endure at the beginning of the season, Ralph Willard recruited two football players and a baseball player to join his squad so that they could scrimmage. One of the football players who joined the West Kentucky basketball team was the quarterback, Eddie Thompson, who rushed for 109 yards in a game, one game this year. Anthony Douglas missed the front end of the one and one. Blue ball, says Bob Pugh. And Ralph Willard asked Bob Donato, one of the other officials, to intervene, and he did. Yes. They changed the call. You would think Western Kentucky might be a little rusty coming to this game. They've not actually played. Their last game was 10 days ago. 
So it's taking them a little while to actually find the mark in terms of the bottom of the net. Well, they have been rusty, but they've been fortunate that their opponents have struggled mightily as well. Western's played good defense. That's what's kept them in this basketball game. Me for three. Horn. Nice pass. Looked like he was going to lose the handle, but Horn held on to it, got it to Bunton for his first two points. Looks like he did slightly lose the handle on that, but was able to get bailed out by making a good pass and recovery. Under two and a half minutes left in the first half here in Orlando. Three-point try by Newsom. I don't know if he called that, but it looked like it went off the glass. Our statistician, Pat McGrath, tells us that he did call it. <laughs> it's a three-point lead for Western Kentucky. Bell. And the dunk missed by Button. Quickly into the front court, Hardaway. Too strong with the layup. Hardaway got it back. And it's blocked out of bounds. No foul. Larry Finch is absolutely irate. It looked to me when Anthony Hardaway took the shot the first time, the ball did not touch the rim or the backboard. That actually was traveling since he came down with the ball. He showed quickness. He missed everything and caught the ball on the other side of the bucket. He's two for 11 from the field. Foul. They want a goal 10. But the ball came down well short of the rim. No basket. It's going to be short. The ball was definitely on the way down. That's what caught the eye of Memphis State, but it was going to be short. It has to have a chance to go in, and that's what Bob Pugh was explaining to Larry Finch. Then had no chance of going in. Darren Horn called for his second foul. It sends Douglas back to the line. He's 0 for 2 from the strike. Much better. It's almost been an adventure when both of these teams have gone to the foul line so far in this first half. Douglas has three points. And now four. Chris Robinson returns for the Hilltoppers, replacing Darren Horn. With a minute 44 left in the half. And with Western Kentucky up by one, 24-23. Ralph Willow was concerned about Chris Robinson. He's had the flu the last week or so, and his energy level is something that might uh, really affect this basketball team. He didn't practice on Tuesday. He did participate in the walkthrough yesterday. Button stymied underneath, out of bounds to Memphis State. Minute 27 left in the first half here in Orlando. And Memphis State turns it over. This is first round action of the Southeast region. The winner of this game will meet the winner of the game between Seton Hall and Tennessee State, which comes up next here in Orlando. Western Kentucky in the white uniforms with the ball. They fell behind 6-0 early, but battled back to take their first lead at 17-16. They've led since then. Neither, the short one. neither team has shot the ball well from the field so far in this game, and both teams have struggled from the free throw line. That's one reason why we have such a close game, but the Hilltoppers still seem to have the momentum because they've had more shot attempts than Memphis State. Leon Mitchell. And now Coles, a long three. Sidney Coles has four points. Memphis State needed a little shot in the arm before the half ended. Let's see if Western can come back and answer. Bowles had only attempted 14 three-pointers all year and had only made three of them. They knocked that one in from NBA range. The Hilltoppers can hold for the final shot of the half. The shot clock is off. Memphis State leads again by two with 20 seconds left in the half. Steal by Douglas. He looked up at the clock. Robinson knocked it away. Douglas got away with a couple of hops and a juggle. Four seconds left. Douglas scores. And he got poked in the eye. Ralph Willard was glaring at 
the officials on the way off. He thought that Douglas traveled and there was no call. Well, Anthony Douglas had several opportunities at this play, beginning with the steal at the at the beginning, but he does a great job, even though he gets poked in the eye, to stay with that basketball and finish the play off and take some of this momentum into the locker room, hopefully for the Memphis State Tigers. That's the end of the first half with the score. Memphis State 28 and Western Kentucky 24. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. United, come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that any time's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Hash. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. All right, welcome back to Prudential Securities at the half. Jim Nance along with uh, Bill Raftery. Two close games at halftime. Both audiences in right now, and Duke is on a run. We're going to take you all around the nation. First off, though, Memphis State, Western Kentucky. Some are watching this game, and Memphis State uh, surviving a cold shooting spell. Rap and leading. Yeah, not shooting well. Uh, had a little problems with the 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. I think Western Kentucky has to convert, but make Penny do so many things, it hurts Memphis State. Got to take him away from the ball. All right, halftime uh, in the east at the Winston-Salem in the 8-9 game. Purdue is leading Rhode Island by a point as Glenn Robinson has 12 points for Purdue in that game. Now, the Duke Blue Devils had an 11-point run, uh, and they have now the 11-point lead over Southern Illinois. Let's go to Chicago with the update. Here's Vern Lundquist and Clark Kellogg. Duke Blue Devils lead it by 11. They went on an 11 to nothing run moments ago in a few minute and 40 second span to go from one down to 10 up. And we have 14 minutes and 8 seconds remaining in the first half. First round action between the third seeded Duke Blue Devils and the number 14 seeded Southern Illinois Saluki. Bell gets two. 17-8. Duke, six in a row. Clark guarded by Lusk. Makes it seven and it's from three points. 20 to 8. This is where it's happening, though, for Duke defensively. Constant, aggressive pressure on the ball. Nothing easy. Southern Illinois needs to look to dribble penetrate. See, they're trying to pass through this pressure. What you need to do is break down that pressure with some penetration off the dribble. Then you can make easier passes. Foul is on Ashraf Amaya, his second foul, and the third team foul. Thomas Hill comes back in, so does Antonio Lang. So on the floor now for Duke, it's Hurley, Lang, Hill. All right, Hill. so Duke with the 12-point advantage. Thomas Hill hits a jumper, so now their lead is up to 14, 22 to 8. Another score in the West, Salt Lake City, 11 minutes to go in the first half, and a little bit of a surprise here early. The Broncos of Santa Clara have hit six out of nine from the floor and lead the two-seat out West, Arizona, by two. And the road to the Final Four on CBS continues in a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. Smooth Bush beer and easy drinking Bush Light. And by John Hancock Financial Services. the Illuminations presentation every night just down the road at Epcot Center, but not too many fireworks here at the Orlando Arena in the first half tonight as Memphis State has a four-point lead over Western Kentucky in this first round Southeast Regional Battle. Sean McDonough along with Derek Dickey, and we thought it was going to be up and down 
with high scoring action, but both teams were so cold it's tough to score. Well, it has been up and down, but they've both been cold. They haven't been able to put the ball in the basket, either by on the field goal side or by the free throw line, so I think they're going to have to look for higher percentage shots and try to do that. Both teams endured lengthy droughts without a field goal. At one point, Memphis State went over 11 minutes without a bucket from the floor. Western Kentucky, four and a half minutes. For the season, Memphis State at 46% of the team and Western Kentucky 49, but tonight they're 35 and 27, respectively. You can look at it a couple of ways. If you're Memphis State, you say, boy, we went 11 minutes without scoring, and we're ahead by four. If you're Western Kentucky, you say, we only shot 27%, we're only down by four. Well, defensively, I think both these coaches can be pleased because they've held their opponent under their averages for the half, but uh, offensively, you've got to put the ball in the basket, and I think you have to get percentage shots that are going to help your team at least try to get over this hump right now. Memphis State scored the last couple of baskets at the half. See if they come out with some momentum. Darnell Mee handed it off to Brian Brown. He knocks it down the first shot of the second half. So perhaps the new half will bring better shooting as the first shot is made. Four points for Brian Brown. Much better job by Western Kentucky in the half court, getting the ball inside the free throw area. Hardaway threw it away. Ten turnovers committed by Memphis State. That's the second by Hardaway. He was two for 11 from the floor in the first half. For five points and three steals, one assist, and four rebounds. And Anthony Hardaway in the first 20 minutes. Darnell Me, short from three. Sidney Coles the rebound. out of bounds by Darius Hall of Western Kentucky. Memphis State will keep it. Sidney Coles is just a freshman. Sometimes he'll get into that no man's land, get underneath the basket and lose the handle on the basketball with nowhere to go. It will be Memphis State ball in front of its own bench. Teams beginning the second half with the same five that started the game. This is Smith on the floor with Allen Douglas, Coles, and Hardaway from Memphis State. Western Kentucky is doing an outstanding job at defending in the post, preventing Memphis State from getting the ball down on the block. Douglas a miss. Allen a couple of chances. Neither one would go. Darnell Mee with it for Western Kentucky. They have the ball down by two. 0 for 4. And Douglas put the wrap on Darius Hall. Take a look at the frustration by the Memphis State Tigers. Anthony Douglas is going to get the ball up on the glass for one shot attempt. Going to go back once again. Another miss. You see four misses by Memphis State with point blank range. They're going to have to put the ball in the basket, which is what they struggled with in the first half. Brian Brown scores over Kelvin Allen. Six points for Brian Brown. Kentucky's doing a good job once again at defending the interior, not letting Memphis State get the shot off where they want to shoot it from. Gerald Horn back in from Memphis State, the junior from Memphis. Douglas is on the bench with three fouls. Smith playing with three. 17-43 left in the second half here in Orlando. We're tied at 28. Memphis State is yet to score in the second half. See if Billy Smith is going to come out and start looking for a shot. He's a player who is very explosive, capable of running off four, five, six shots at a time. But the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers have done a good job with just denying him the basketball. Off the mark. Bell to me. 
Out of bounds off me. Cole's got a hand on it, deflected it off me, and it went out of bounds. Memphis State will have it. Darnell me, not it wasn't off you. Didn't come over here. <laughs> Haven't met since 1986 when they played at Madison Square Garden in the preseason NIT. Hardaway knocks in the jumper. That game back in 86 was won by Western Kentucky. 68-67. The all-time series between these two schools is tied at eight wins apiece. Western Kentucky has some great history with a guy who made a lot of noise back in the early late 60s, Jim McDaniel at Western Kentucky. The slam dunk for Darius Hall. He has four points. And we're knotted again, this time at 30. Another good job by Mark Bell with the, getting inside the defense, drawing it to him, making a nice pitch out. Four minutes played, second half. Memphis State and Western Kentucky tied at 30. Hard away for three. Take it out of here. Paul gave it the horn. Now it's three on one. They kick it out to Bell for three. Well short. Paul had it blocked by Allen. A whistle from a mile away, and Kelvin Allen called for a foul as he blocked the shot. Take a look at this nice pass by Mark Bell getting inside, taking three defenders with him in a nice dish off. Now look at the defense that's being played on Anthony Hardaway. Absolutely wonderful job to cut off his penetration. Darnell Mee is all over it. That's been the story of the game this evening. You know, we defense. mentioned that Ralph Willard says that Mee is one of the best defenders in the country, and he's done nothing to tarnish that reputation tonight. Darius Hall, as I mentioned earlier, only a 49% three point shooter, and now 0 for 4 from the line down. Cephas Bunton comes back in for Brian Brown. There are some players who struggle from the free throw line, but when you get into pressure situations, a lot of times you get your seniors and guys with a little bit more experience will step up and they'll knock shots in just like that. One out of two for Hall, and Western Kentucky leads by one. Welcome back to the Orlando Arena. Sean McDonough with Derek Dickey, our producer Bob Monsbach, our director Andy Kindle. This is first round action of the Southeast region. Western Kentucky with a one point lead over Memphis State. Nearly the five count. Kelvin Allen just did get it in and Mean knocked it back out of bounds. Usually you want your best passer out of bounds. Doesn't surprise me if, if Larry Finch will start putting Anthony Hardaway on the baseline just so they can get it in to the right person. Hardaway avoided the double team by getting it off to Allen. Nice pressure by Western Kentucky. Billy Smith guided by Horn. Smith went over the 1,000 career point mark earlier this year on March 6th in the game against Cincinnati. Came into the night with 1,034 career points, 26th all time at Memphis State. With four on the shot clock, the shot from Smith is well short. Bell with help coming. The line for two. Good catch and score by Cephas Punton. This is what we expected. Smith had it rejected. Me blocked it and kept it in bounds to Horn. See, me and Smith make some outstanding blocks for Western Kentucky. What they've done with the blocks is keep the ball in bounds instead of knocking it up into the 12th row, which is an outstanding defensive effort because it gives your team a chance to get possession. So Santa Clara is still leading Arizona out west. That's an awfully good block by Darnell Knee to keep me to keep the ball in play for his team. Western Kentucky is now swatted 10 shots. You're looking at a team like Memphis State who is usually so athletic they can jump over their defenders, but they're not getting past these hilltoppers. Ball is kicked 
by Darius Hall. They'll reset the shot clock to a fresh 45 with 14 19 remaining and with the Hilltoppers leading by three. Super job on Billy Smith, who is the key to this Memphis State basketball team, not allowing him to catch the ball in his shooting rhythm. And that's what Ralph Willard said. He said we're really more concerned with Smith than Hardaway because you know Hardaway is going to do what he's going to do. But if he can prevent Smith from joining him, right, you have a chance to beat them. Memphis State this half, by the way, one for 11 from the field. They've only scored two points and now four as Hardaway powered his way to the bucket. Now, believe it or not, the Hilltoppers did their job. They made Hardaway work to get that shot off. Next time he comes down, he may turn into another two or three defenders. Me. Back down to the corner by Bunton. Horn threw it away. And crashing hard in a press row was Hall. And he's still hobbling. Darius Hall going up into the stands after this ball, and I believe he hits his leg on a chair as he goes over. He's going to have a little bruise there for a while, but I think he's going to be okay. He's still in the ball game. As Memphis State brings it into the front court, trailing by one with 13-20 remaining. For three, Smith was off the mark. Hardaway trying to shed me. He did. There's evidence of the brilliance of Anthony Hardaway. That's just a part of what Anthony Hardaway is capable of doing in terms of taking over a game on the offensive end, but he has to get some help from his teammates. Hardaway now with 11 points. Look at Anthony Hardaway going in with the cradle and the layup over the defender, but he does it over the top of the hand and able to release that ball at the top of his jump, but he's just a tremendous one-on-one -on -one player, but he has to get help from his teammates shooting the ball from the outside so that it can open up that inside game for the Tigers. And foul was against Darius Hall, his third, so Memphis State has it back with a one-point lead. Anthony Hardaway has scored all six Memphis State points here in the second half. Bell to steal. Four on two. Horn. Blocked. The 17 fakes didn't free him up for the shot. And Bell off the mark from three. Tipped in by Bunton. Deepest Bunton with the left hand over two Memphis State defenders. Again, a nice job by the Hilltoppers going after the loose balls and hitting the glass. Hardaway at NBA three. Barely glanced the front rim. And Bell calls a timeout as he was double teamed in the backcourt. 12.05 remaining in Orlando. It's the Hilltoppers by one. First round coverage continues tonight on CBS with the four games you see listed. And waiting in the on-deck circle, Arthur S. Karnishavis and the Seton Hall Pirates. They'll take the floor following this game to take on Tennessee State in the fourth and final game of the day here in Orlando. Western Kentucky with the ball with under 12 minutes remaining. And as Bunton went up, he was fouled by Kelvin Allen. His third. Ralph Willard having worked under Rick Pitino, not only with the UK Wildcats, but also with the New York Knicks, runs the same system, very similar style. A lot of screens, a lot of curls, and that was a great job to come across the curl. See this button coming across with his hands wide open, ready to receive that pass. Ralph Willard was an assistant to Rick Pitino for two years with the New York Knicks and for one year at Kentucky. Bunton at the line. He has six points tonight. Still struggling. Ralph Willard does not look real pleased, nor should he. The free throw shooting has not been good. Really, in any of the games that we've seen today. And he missed two. Horn cleared the second miss. Five of 12 from the line. 
by the Hilltoppers. Memphis State down one with the ball, 11.37 remaining. Hilltoppers averaging 86 points a game. Memphis State averaging just over 75 points a game. And we got 10 minutes to go in this game, and 35, 34. So much for the track meet. Allen scores. Tigers back up by one. Six points for Kelvin Allen. Good patience by Billy Smith. He had a chance to take that launch that ball from the outside, but he looked inside to try to get that higher percentage shot. Arizona has come from behind to take a two-point lead over Santa Clara. At the half, they were down by 10. Purdue and Rhode Island have been nip and tuck most of the way. And Winston-Salem, Duke still comfortably ahead of Southern Illinois. And here, it's been nip and tuck just about all the way. And at the moment, it's the Memphis State Tigers with a one-point lead. 10 on the shot clock as Horn had it blocked goaltending the call against Gerald Horn. throws it out. Darren Horn gets credit for the hoop. Nice drive into the middle, right inside the defense. Get that shot up over the shot blocker. Only the horn of plenty in the lane. <laughs> or at least plenty of horn. Ooh, 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 ooh. On both sides. And a reach in foul called against Button. Ralph. Ralph Willard says that when the game begins, he likes to apply pressure, full court, half court, trapping, whatever it takes, so that by the second half, he can actually wear his opponent down, making it easier for the Hilltoppers to be able to get rebounds and take charge of the basketball game. Billy Smith, guarded by Michael Fralich, who's checked into the game. It's a zone now for Western Kentucky. Three-point try off the mark from Hardaway. Ralph Willard switching the defense again. 2-3 zone. Anthony Hardaway is 5 for 18 from the floor. Aaron Horn. For Fralich. Fortunate to get it off was Fralich. And they settle with 20 on the shot clock. We're past the midpoint of the second half here in Orlando. Western Kentucky leads by one. Ralph Willard can't believe there wasn't a foul call as the ball went out of bounds. Right in front of him. He looked at the referee and just threw his hands up. He's not having any luck with that official, so he's going to try the other down in the corner. Good coaches work the officials. And he might have studied... Coach Patino style. <laughs> you think there's a chance? Fralix. That's a two-point field goal for the freshman from Fredonia, Kentucky. Ralph Willard calls Mark Michael Fralix a pure shooter. Charge. Leon Mitchell ran into Brian Brown. First foul on Mitchell. Another defensive effort by these Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Not only did they not let Memphis State get the shot off. Look at this good defense. Get right in the way, Brian Brown. Excellent job holding his position. Mark Bell, quite happy to see Fralix as he comes back in. Or was it the other way around? I don't know. <laughs> it was almost a tearful farewell with 9.21 remaining. Is a, it, it really is a very emotional basketball game, and, and the fact that these guys are playing so hard and not able to get the ball in the basket or not able to make free throws has made it so much fun for these guys that you want to concentrate as hard as you can not to make mistakes. Bell, double dribble. 20 on the shot clock, under nine minutes to play in the game. Western Kentucky leads by three. Bell short with it. Bunton called for the foul as he went after it with Jarrell Horn. Gerald Horn, pardon me. Darnell Mee back in, replacing Chris Robinson. Forty-seven remaining here in Orlando. Western Kentucky leads by one. 
Memphis State had a four point lead at the half. These two teams like to trap and press and run, but because of cold shooting on each side, it's been a very low scoring game. Rennell Mee has done a great job on Anthony Hardaway. He's held perhaps the best player in the country to five of 18 from the floor, but Mee himself, if that's good English, <laughs> is one for 12 from the floor. This has been an unusual basketball game. We expected to see high scoring, but both teams have played what I call such good defense that they've held their opponents far under their averages by not allowing them to get field goals and not allowing them to make free throws. Hardaway. Not only the best player in the conference, but he's the best students on the team. He got that one to bounce in. Anthony Hardaway over the last two semesters has had a 3.4 grade point average as an education major. And on the Dean's list at Memphis State. Eight minutes to be played. One point. Western Kentucky lead. Bell for three. Three. Good pass by Darnell Mee. The one extra pass enabled that shot to go up uncontested. The trap. Mitchell's in trouble. The steal. And then Mee threw it away. He couldn't hit Cephas Bunton along the end line. Western Kentucky by four. We'll be back in just a moment. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Western Kentucky by four with 742 remaining here in Orlando. It's Memphis State with the ball. Hardaway. He's four for eight from the floor this half. The rest of the Memphis State team a combined one for ten. Coles, it was kicked. And a fresh 45 after the kick by Brian Brown. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Western Kentucky leads by four. Make it two as Anthony Douglas scores inside. Coach Larry Finch calls him a warrior. Today is his 51st straight start for Memphis State. Says you won't find a tougher, more mobile big guy in the country than Anthony Douglas. Anthony Douglas does a great job because he's at practice every day. He works very hard. And also for the games, you don't see him sit down, even though he does get a lot of nagging injuries. Seven minutes remaining. The winner of this game meets the winner of the Seton Hall Tennessee State game. Still upcoming tonight here in Orlando. Sidney Coles. A two pointer would tie it. A three would give Memphis State the lead. Memphis State has done a very good job at looking for their shots, but Western Kentucky has taken them out of the shooting area. They've done a great job at denying the second and third shots by Memphis State and also kept the ball out of the hands of Anthony Hardaway and Billy Smith. Douglas had to get out of the lane. Now he's back into the lane with a good dish. Horn missed the dunk. Me all the way into the lane, and he was fouled by Sidney Coles. Me will go to the line for two. And that's kind of fitting because it's been a poor a poor shooting night for both teams Western Kentucky up to 35 percent for the game and they've had to shoot better than 50 percent this half to get it to 35 for the game they've both been miserable from beyond the three point line and Hardaway is 13 points but he's shooting under 33 percent both teams shot extremely poor in the first half Memphis State and Western Kentucky played great defense however Failing to convert the ball in the basket after they got possession of it is a big problem for both these coaches. That's why the score is as close as it is. And not only that, they cannot make free throws to get this game over the hump. The Hilltoppers now 5 of 13 from the line. Maybe it's something about this arena. We saw very poor free throw shooting in the Tulane game against Kansas State, particularly by the Green Wave. They survived that to beat the Wildcats by two. Western Kentucky by three, 6-10 remaining. Hardaway, great pass to Douglas. Higher percentage shots. Anthony Douglas has taken layups the last two times down. Quickly at the other end. 
He only has eight. He averages 19 and a half a game. This is the pace we expected to see with Western Kentucky averaging 86 points a game. Another great pass by Hardaway, this time to Kelvin Allen. Teams that play aggressive defense and overplay are susceptible to back doors. If you have a great passer, Anthony Hardaway with the ball in his hands can distribute it very, very well. After the bell miss, battle along the end line, Western Kentucky will keep it. Well, Magic Johnson says Anthony Hardaway reminds him of Magic Johnson. That's the highest compliment. Do you see any room through there? Is there a seam? That's a very nice pass over the top by Hardaway, finding an open teammate once again. Bell down the lane with a nifty scoop. 14 points for Bell. He scored in double figures in 27 of the 30 Hilltopper games this year. Getting close to the pace that we thought we were going to see in this basketball game. Sidney Coles is losing his rep. Don't be surprised if the officials stop and make him correct that on his left leg. And the foul is on Darius Hall, and that's his fourth. That's just the fourth team foul this half against Western Kentucky. Memphis State has been called for five. There was some stray tape hanging from that wrap around the left leg of Sidney Coles, but they removed it. He missed five games in late February and early March with a hairline fracture of his lower left leg. Great court awareness for a point guard at six foot four inches can see over the defense. Douglas missed the first. He's now two for five from the line. Neither team has been able to shake the other and one reason not only the cold shooting but the free throws have been a problem a major problem. The Tigers are six for 13 from the line. Six for 14. Western Kentucky still leads by three under five minutes to be played. The Hilltoppers, the seventh seed in the Southeast. Memphis State seeded number 10. Me, the pump fake, then lost a hand on the dribble. Billy Smith. A foul. And that's his fourth. Billy Smith has to give that basketball up. If he gives it up to Hardaway, he's got a chance to either get it back or to follow the shot. Look at Billy Smith coming down. It's great position by Darren Horn to be able to take that charge. But Billy Smith, knowing he's got three fouls, you got to make a decision. Memphis State fans are booing. The replays are seen on the overhead video screen here at Orlando Arena. Western Kentucky in possession of the ball and a three-point lead with four and a half minutes remaining. Horn off the bell. Well, now me. One of the conference leaders in steals in the Great Midwest Conference. And he almost stole it back to the other end. Hardaway has four steals tonight. He averages 2.3 steals per game. And the second in the Great Midwest in steals. 20 on the shot clock. Under four minutes to be played as Douglas scores to make it a one-point game. Part of the quickness that Larry Finch is talking about Anthony Douglas. One quick step into the middle. The state doesn't seem to be playing the same aggressive style defense that Western Kentucky plays. So on offense, Western's been able to get pretty much the shots they've wanted. Brian Brown knocks in the baseline jumper. He has eight. Better than his average of six points per game this season. Approaching three minutes remaining, Horn went for the steal. Larry Finch wanted the foul as he brushed Billy Smith. Allen 
established position and he was bumped from behind by Cephas Bunton. 257 left in Orlando, Western Kentucky, leads by three. Western Kentucky has a three-point lead with under three minutes remaining here in Orlando. Western Kentucky came into tonight averaging 87 points per game. They have 49. Memphis State averages 76 for the year. They have 46. When you're shooting around 33%, you're not going to score much. Both teams are in that range from the floor tonight. Coles for three, and the tie was short. Horn tipped it ahead. The bell. Standing pass by Darren Horn to pitch the ball out front without void and avoided the contact, not committing the foul. Bell has 16 points. They go into Douglas. And he's been tough, particularly in the second half. 14 for Anthony Douglas. Very consistent basketball player. Not only rebounding the ball, but can score inside on the low post. 2-10 remaining. Western Kentucky up by three. Western Kentucky basketball team shows a lot of patience and a lot of poise. Shot clock at 15. And Bell is double teamed. Horn checked the shot clock. And throws a terrible pass. <laughs> if looks could kill, Horn would be in big trouble. Hardaway scores. Great concentration by Anthony Hardaway. Gets the ball stripped away and stays with it to put it up on the glass. Willard wants a timeout and gets it, and I wouldn't want to be Darren Horn on the way to that huddle. It's a one-point game. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Orlando with a minute 23 remaining. The seventh seed, Western Kentucky, has a one-point lead over the number 10 seed, Memphis State. And it's Western Kentucky ball with a fresh 45. Me to inbound. And he got it into Brian Brown. They're on the floor with Bell, Horn, and Bunton for the Hilltoppers. It's Hardaway, Smith, Allen, Mitchell, and Douglas for Memphis State. Both teams turning up the intensity on defense, trying to either get a steal or a turnover. It's been closely played throughout the second half. The largest lead for Memphis State in the second half. Two points. And for Western Kentucky, five points. Horn lost it. Memphis State has the ball back, trailing by one with a minute remaining. That's your turnover. Memphis State forced the pressure. The second turnover by Darren Horn in the last minute and a half. Hardaway, foul, count it! How special is Anthony Hardaway? He gets fouled, switches it over to his left hand, being a right-handed player, absorbs the contact, and still able to finish the play off. Darnell Mee called for his second foul. Hardaway is one of two from the line. Both teams are six for 14 from the free throw line tonight. Memphis State by one. Way no off. basket. Billy Smith in the line too soon. Duke Edsel with the gutsy call. He spotted the lane violation. No excuse for that, particularly at this juncture of the game. Billy Smith trying to do a Michael Jordan imitation of going into after the missed free throw. Stepped across that plane too soon. So it's still a one-point lead for Memphis State with 45 and change remaining. Me. Now if they want they can more or less take the final shot. There's tenths of seconds between the game clock, which you see, and the shot clock. Foul called as Bell broke from the trap. 
that may or may not have been a break for Memphis State because once he got out of the trap, it was five on three as he was heading for the bucket. It was a good job by Anthony Hardaway. Looks like he tried to commit that foul to send the Hilltoppers to the foul line. They're not shooting free throws very well. Why not take the gamble? That was the 17th foul of the half against Memphis State, the second personal against Hardaway. One and one for Bell, only a 63% free throw shooter. A two for two tonight and make it three for three. That one ties the game. You look for leadership, you look for Mark Bell. Time out of the floor. The Tigers and Toppers tied at 52. Memphis State and Western Kentucky tied at 52 with 32 seconds remaining. Western Kentucky now with one timeout left. Both teams in the one and one situation the rest of the way. Bell with the second free throw. He rattles it in. He has 18 points. And Western Kentucky has a one-point lead with 30 seconds remaining. Surprised Sidney Cole is not back in the game for Memphis State. Hardaway. Me reached in and was called for the foul. His third. And Hardaway will have a one-and-one -one opportunity. Anthony Hardaway, a 77% free throw shooter on the year. During the last part of the game, even higher percentage. Rhode Island in Winston-Salem in the East region, leading Purdue with a minute eight left by six. Hardaway, a one-and-one. One. No good. Rebound Bell, his ninth at five feet eight. Memphis State has to foul, and they do. Douglas grabbed me with 13 and a half seconds remaining. Four fouls on Anthony Douglas. Normally you would think that an Anthony Hardaway steps to the line and knocks these free throws in. No, there is pressure on both ends of the court. And Hardaway might well be, as this coach says, the best player in the country, and many others share that opinion, but... Tonight, an outstanding defender named Darnell Mee held him at bay. Shut him down. Hardaway, 8 of 21 from the floor. Mee at the line makes the first of the one and one. It's a two-point lead for Western Kentucky. Even if he makes this one, the Tigers could tie it with a three. They have two guys out there who are very capable in Billy Smith and Anthony Hardaway from the three-point range. Memphis State needs a three-pointer to tie. Ralph Willard uses his final timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Memphis State needs a three-pointer to tie it with 13 and a half seconds remaining. The Tigers are two of 10 from three-point land tonight. Hardaway with the ball. He's 0 for 5 from beyond the three-point line this evening. Seven seconds left. Newsom for three. No good. Me with it. And he is fouled in the corner with one and a half seconds remaining. Are we seeing the last college game of Anthony Hardaway? There is a chance. NBA scouts have been watching him for some time, but Darnell Me has done an outstanding job defensively of putting the clamps on him and shutting him down. If the state's going for that three-pointer to tie the game from the outside, the shot is missed, and who comes up with the rebound? Darnell Meade. Given the circumstances, that wasn't a bad shot. It was from right at the NBA three-point line. But Newsom couldn't get it to go. We'll be back for the final second and a half after this. Second and a half remaining here in Orlando. Western Kentucky with a three-point lead. And Darnell Mee of the Hilltoppers is at the line one and one. Short, but Cephas Bunton has the rebound. And Western Kentucky has the win. The final score, Western Kentucky 55, Memphis State 52.
for Larry Finch is over at 20 and 12. Western Kentucky will play Saturday against the winner of the next game here in Orlando between the second seed Seton Hall and number 15 Tennessee State. The Chevrolet players of the game are Anthony Douglas of Memphis State. He had 14 points and nine rebounds and Mark Bell of Western Kentucky who had 18 points and nine rebounds at five feet eight inches tall. He was four for four from the line. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified student athletes in all chosen endeavors. We'll be back in just a moment. First, we're going to take the road on the Final Four through New York and then dish.